Hey everybody, welcome back to the studio. Today we are taking this blank paper and turning it into this. Alright, today we are going to do two simple landscapes. One is going to be fields where we're kind of focused more with kind of creating these fun clouds in the sky. And then our second one is going to be doing a shoreline with some nice pine trees. And our focus is more right here with a simple just wash for our sky. So let's get started. All right, materials today. All you need is watercolor paper. I have Arches, a 140 pound cold press, and then some watercolors. For my watercolors, I'm using Winsor Newton, this little nice palette, um, anything works. And then also a pencil to sketch um, your, your landscape real quickly. And then I'm gonna be using a 3 4 inch flat brush um, for this painting, but again, too, any paintbrush you have will work. Okay, so for these simple landscapes, I lightly sketch in um, just to help for when I start laying the paint down so that it's not daunting to have just like a white piece of paper. And so um, for this first one, we're gonna do um, a line going across about uh, more than halfway down, about a quarter on your paper. And then we're gonna do, we're gonna have our focus on this one be mostly the sky. And so we're gonna draw angled line coming down this way, an angled line coming down this way, and then also kind of coming up on the sides because we want our clouds to kind of have this nice movement kind of going into each other right here. And then right here, we're gonna kind of just act like this is a grass um, wheat field out in the prairie um, when you're driving across you know those states where it's just miles and miles of fields um, that's what we're gonna do down here and to have a little bit of movement and um, more interest in the bottom we're gonna just put in a couple diagonal lines and kind of and then we'll pull in some different colors down there okay now that that one is drawn in lightly, I'm gonna lightly sketch in this one as well. For this one, we're gonna have our focus be, instead of the sky on this one, we're gonna have our focus be um, this edge of a, a riverbank or um, shore, shore edge, I guess. So I'm gonna kinda draw a diagonal line going back and then a line going straight across just almost around the same spot as our horizon line on this side as well. And then what I'm gonna do is lightly sketch in a tree. And all I'm doing right now is um, do an upside down V and then pull out a couple on each side, almost just like sideways Vs. And then do the same back here. Having these very varying in heights um, will help help it look um, more real versus if you have them all going down um, in a V, they'll start to look um, more fake. And then we're gonna have our tree stop right there. Then we're gonna pull out our um, edge of our shoreline kind of and so notice as it's closer to us right here in the front our shore is going to be a lot um, 
bigger and then as it's going back it's getting it's getting less and less okay that's gonna be our focal point in the sky we'll just do a simple wash um, so I'm not gonna put cloud lines up there what I'm gonna do now is grab an eraser and lightly erase Okay, the reason why you always want to, after you lightly sketch in um, your landscape with watercolor, you wanna go back and lightly erase it because watercolor is opaque and so you can see through. And if you go back and erase your pencil lines, then you won't see them through um, your watercolor as much. Um, and so that's why I always go back and erase them. Sometimes it's cool though to also see those pencil lines. And so sometimes I leave them, personal preference. Um, okay, let's start with this landscape first. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the bottom part. And so I'm gonna grab um, some nice kind of gold yellows just to lay in. And notice I'm painting in this diagonal line right now. And then I'll also come in and put my horizon line as well. Kind of blending this together, leaving some white spaces um because i'm going to come back with some other colors and just some other other stuff blending in this front okay i'm gonna leave that down here for our field right now i'm gonna wash out my brush and i'm gonna come and grab um, blue but before I can grab that I need to clean out the top of my palette so I have somewhere to put this blue all right I'm gonna follow that line that we had drawn in Get a little more water on my brush. Come back. And I'm staying within that swoopy motion coming down on this side and that swoopy motion on this side coming down. I'm gonna put a little bit of a cloud right in there. And then I'm also gonna come and have just a straight line going across the bottom right here. Notice I'm kinda, I got close to my field down here and so that yellow's kinda pulling up into my blue right now. So I'm just gonna take my brush and try and uh, wipe that out and then I'll come back later and put in, put in some sky right there. Okay, as my sky is going up higher, um, I'm gonna get a little bit darker with my colors. And then also too, I'm gonna kind of pull down, same motions on this side. On my left side, I'm coming down this way. And then on my other side, I'm gonna kind of come down like so. a little bit into there yeah that's making some fun shadow uh, not shadow shapes some fun cloud shapes in there okay those look pretty good for right now um, I'm gonna let this dry we're gonna move over to here while I have um, this blue on my brush I'm gonna not have it quite the same blue I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, an orange red to kind of dull the blue because blue's complementary color is orange And so I'm just gonna dull it a little bit because I don't want it quite as bright um, I want it more of a stormy 
blue. And so I'm gonna get that blue, then I'm going to come over and grab my water and just pull some water on the top here because I'm gonna wash this blue color all the way down. And so first I'm doing water and then I can come in with my color and wash that in there. Mixing up a little more of my color, my blue. So wetting your paper before um, you put your sky in will help blend that color um, so that it looks even all the way across. I'm going to rinse out my brush and then I'm gonna check this to see if it's dry yet. I'm gonna give it another minute or so and then we can come back and start playing on this one. This one we're gonna leave alone now that we've washed in our sky so that this can dry before we put in the tops of our trees. For our field, I'm gonna start mixing up my color and I'm gonna keep all the colors down here in the field um, in the yellow, golds, browns with maybe a little bit of uh, like a burgundy in there as well. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna come in and go a little bit darker. Rinse out my brush. Come pull that so that doesn't have a harsh line. There we go. As I'm pulling this down, I'm keeping a diagonal line with my brush. I'm gonna come and pull this over. Come back to my gold. Okay, that's good for down in our um, field area. And really all I was thinking about too is just kind of getting some of the, the colors that would be in a field, which are, like I said, your, your gold, yellows, a um, little bit of the darker browns, kind of to add some contrast in there. Um, and then also I like leaving little areas of white in there, again, just for that kind of contrast. Um, it's just a personal preference that I like to do. In my sky, I'm gonna come back with a little bit of a darker blue now, again, because the more you can add darker and light, lighter values together, you get more contrast and it just makes your piece more um, engaging and interesting. So I'm gonna come back with some blues for my sky. dark so I'm gonna have to, to 
dilute this a little bit, get a little more water in my brush so it's not quite so dark. Okay, again, I'm gonna start at the top because that's where it's a little bit darker. And I'm gonna come in with this darker value and go on top of my brush strokes that I had before. And then also down here lightly, adding some dimension in here. Once I lay in this darker color too, um, to blend it more, I'll just rinse out my brush and just have water on the brush and then lightly come back in with the water. Um, and then that'll soften those edges so that it isn't quite so, so harsh. Some spots though, you want it to be harsh. Like right there, I love that edge. I'm gonna keep it. Same with right there, I like that edge. Um, and so, I don't always come back and soften the edges, just sometimes. I'm gonna come back down here and again have this horizon line. Rinse out my brush and just pull this up now. Still keeps pulling. All right, that one's looking pretty good. The only thing I'm gonna probably come do after this is like completely dry is just fix that little spot where it kept bleeding up. And so I'll just come back in with my blue. Um, okay, our sky, our, <laughs> I sound like a pirate over here. Um, our sky is now dry. I always just check it with my finger um, to make sure before putting paint down. All right, let's do the shoreline. So I'm going to come in um, and get So again, I am keeping this nice diagonal line back as I am lightly putting in the shore edge. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm also going to pull some of this color out into our water slightly. I'm gonna rinse out my brush and just kind of come back with just water so that's not too too dark. Soften that up. Okay, that looks good. Now I can come in and start doing my trees. I'm gonna start with um, a nice dark, dark green that's almost gonna be black. Um, and put in the darks first on these trees. Yeah. Mix in some green with blue and red. Um, Green's complementary color is red, and so I'm trying to really darken that with using the red. Because if you have even amounts of red and green, you'll end up with its neutral. All right, that seems pretty dark, so I'm gonna come over here. Our darkest shadows are gonna be towards the front, and they're gonna get lighter as they go back in the distance. And so I'm gonna kinda just start lightly coming in and putting in these little, it's kind of almost, if you think about it, like a zigzag line. Gonna make that a little bit darker right there. Have a hair on my brush. That's what happens when you have a golden retriever that sheds like crazy. All right, now that I'm coming up to the top of my tree, I am pulling out to the left and to the right my branches. Mm -hmm. 
Now I'm kind of going back um, and doing all the tops of the trees right now just because as you continue to use this paint on your brush it naturally starts to get um, lighter and lighter and so I'm gonna keep pulling back Get a little more paint in my brush. It is crazy windy here today in Chicago. And so I'm just listening to this windstorm. That's good for the top of my trees. I'm gonna now come in and kind of block in some dark shapes just like this. And kind of what I'm thinking about when I'm blocking in these dark, darker shapes um, is if you look at a group of trees like this, a forest, um, you don't see the individual branches until you get to the top and the skies you know, coming through, then you can really see the individual branches coming out. But down here, it just ends up being um, these really cool, I call them like shadow shapes that I kind of will spend time um, looking at and studying because that's really what they are, just are shapes, they're not branches. And so when you can break, break things down into shapes, um, it's a lot easier to paint. Because right now, I'm like, just going for interesting shapes where my shadows would be hitting. And then I can come back with my lighter green and come in into these other lighter spots. I'm also going to pull a little bit of that dark out to here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is rinse out my brush and get lighter green. So I'm going to add some yellow to my green. Get a nice, nice yellowy green. All right, now I'm gonna come back in here and put in these lighter green spots. And that I'm just using the very tip of my brush. What I could do is just grab a smaller brush, but I'm being lazy and just wanting to do the whole thing with this brush, so I'm just using the edges right now of my brush to get those in there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Pulling the screen out. That's good for like a first pass on our trees. We've got um, two values in there. We've got kind of like a, a lighter medium value and then our darker value. I'm gonna come in while that's drying and work on my water and the shoreline edge. And so I'm gonna come and rinse out my brush um, and I'm gonna get a little bit of a lighter value for the shoreline. So I'm gonna kind of use um, more of a yellowy gold to come back in here and kind of have a nice Nice highlight on here. It's nice to be able to kind of see that um, gold showing through now. Pull a little out into the water. Again. 
All right, rinse that out. While this is taking a second to dry, I'm gonna come over and feel this. See if I can come work on this sky. You know, it's slightly wet, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it be for a second still. Okay, let's come in with um, a little bit darker darks now, and we're gonna push these values more in our trees. So I like coming back a second time with really dark blacks and then also really nice bright, bright um, yellow greens to kind of just push that contrast. that to look like it's getting further away and so that should be getting lighter back there and it shouldn't have these dark darks when you put in um, little pockets and kind of enclose areas. That looks good. All right, I'm gonna rinse out my brush and just lightly come in with not as strong. some of those nice darks too on my shore edge right here. I've got kind of like a nice black right now. I'm gonna even pull this out into my water. And then same with back here, just do a little right now kind of looks like ladder going back so I'm gonna go back and rinse out my brush and kind of come back soften the edges on some of these and even just like pull them more so it's not quite so ladder like looking yeah that looks good pull it across Now those are softer as they get back and a little bit um, more harsher towards the front. I'm also gonna come wipe that real fast as that was bleeding onto the shoreline. Okay, I'm gonna come back with my lighter greens on this side. in there. Okay, it'll look nice in there. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry for a second before we come back and finish off our shore and then our water. This is now dry so I can come back and do my water and my shore. So I'm gonna come with my blue first.
and I'm gonna come and lightly touch in the sky in the Right, so I'm leaving little gaps in there just so that I can come back with the paintbrush and kind of um, smooth them out, but then it will be, the color will be less saturated. Okay. Looks pretty good. I'm going to rinse out my brush and come over here and just do this spot on the sky that kept getting kind of yellow. There we go. come back with a nice dark value right here I'm gonna let that dry for a second and then just come back and fix the shoreline. Okay, so we're gonna come back and just do our darks on our shore edge real fast. So I'm gonna come in and pull, pull this out. some of this darks back in. Rinse out my brush. And then just lightly grab. I like this being really dark, um, really close to the edge because it kind of draws your viewer's eye um, really quickly. Putting some of this dark up in there. And last but not least, throwing some final dark into this first trees. Okay. 
connecting those darks to the shore edge. That looks pretty good. Thank you for following along today in doing these two landscapes. If you have suggestions of what you would like to be painting or learning how to paint next, comment below. If you're liking these videos, like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.